Hi, today I want to talk to you about the Industrial Revolution. Actually, there have been three. You may not have known that. I honestly didn't know that until I started doing some research into the history of leadership and where did this all come from? Where did management come from? Where does the role of the manager come from? Uh, three Industrial Revolutions. The first Industrial Revolution was the invention of the machine and using machines to do work that we used to do by hand. So uh, the invention of the steam engine and the use of moved us from simple machines like mills, like, like a windmill or a water mill, into using machines like steam engines and combustion engines to do work that we used to do with our hands. Uh, there wasn't a huge shift in, um, in leadership at that point, but the next revolution, which was made possible by the first revolution, was the assembly line. Now, when the assembly line started to be a thing, uh, and it wasn't it wasn't Henry Ford that made the first assembly line, but he really did perfect a lot of elements that we know about the assembly line today. And when we started doing that, um, well, what was happening was they were trying to create the most effective way to get work done. And in that time period, you see, you had the move from uh, people who were uh, craftspeople. And, and masters in, in their craft and apprentices. So you had the, the apprentice and master programs. Uh, and th then you had this shift to uh, assembly lines where you could have essentially non-skilled workers doing the work that a craftsperson used to do. Now imagine yourself back in those times and you're a craftsperson who spent your entire life working and refining and honing your craft. You worked under a master craftsman before you for decades before you were finally released to say, yes, you can start your own business now. You are released from being an apprentice. You are now a master. Uh, you can join the guild. You're now a, a professional. You have spent your whole life doing that. Now, all of a sudden, this Joe Schmo next door who has spent no time learning a skill, a craft, now they can go work in the factory and they're creating the products that you used to create. They're putting you out of business. Can you see the parallels here in the, the kind of uh, economic mental shifts and economic and mental shifts that happened there comparing to that to today's world? If you are a taxi driver and Uber just put you out of business or you're a, uh, a, a bookstore and Amazon just put you out of business, right? There's huge parallels between these two things. Another thing that happened that, that you can see is was the rise of the role of manager. The role actually didn't exist before the assembly line and the assembly line industrial revolution. The role of the manager in this context was to take all those things that a master craftsperson used to do and break it up into little pieces, assign those pieces of work to the individual people who would be doing them, show them the one best way to do it, and make sure they were doing it efficiently all the time, that they didn't slow down, that they didn't have a break. I mean, maybe they had breaks, but not if you could avoid it. That at that time, that everything was working just the same as possible, as, as routine as possible. Now, at that time, remember, an assembly line, the, the goal there was to produce a bunch of something, mass production. And the way an organization in that time period was successful was by economies of scale, uh, being able to dominate the both the supply chain and the distribution chain. If you were able to dominate both of those things and own the supply and distribution chains, and you were able to have mass production, so your economies of scale gave you cheaper product, uh, you, you could develop products for less money, then you were able to dominate the market. Right? That's how it worked back then. Uh, so the, the role of this manager was to make sure all that, that went correctly. Actually, uh, in an ideal world for that time period, what would happen would be they wouldn't have any workers on the assembly line. The, the only reason to have workers was they just didn't have the technology to automate that part of the work yet, right? So that was the only reason that they even had workers was we can't automate your job yet, so we'll have you put the tire on the car. So the idea of trying to make that person be as efficient 
efficient and effective as possible doing the same thing the same way over and over, right, was to make them as much machine-like as possible. So you see that, how that works there? Now, there's another revolution that has come along, and you may not call it an industrial revolution, but we, we, we're starting to call it one today. And that's the technology and, and electronics evolution, right? The, the knowledge work revolution. And this industrial revolution has created another fundamental shift in the way things work. And if you look at what made things work then was efficiency, uh, um, reduction in variation. You don't want variation in your products or services because that is a, a defect, that's a problem. Um, so you want things to be consistent, always the same. Nowadays, what makes a company successful today? What makes a company successful today is innovation, creativity, speed. These things are what make businesses productive today, or make, make businesses successful today. If you look at things like um, Airbnb or, or, or Uber and Lyft and those kinds of disruptive organizations, the only way you can disrupt a market is if you are innovative, you're creating something new that no one has ever had before, no one has ever done before, and you're fast. Because if you look right now, I just went on, on uh, Expedia the other day looking for a hotel for a travel, for a trip I'm doing, uh, and they are listing their uh, personal homes now, just like Airbnb uses. So interesting little uh, thing happening there, but Airbnb dominates that market because they were fast. They got out there, they did it, and, and they created a market that didn't exist before because they were innovative. But now look, the job of a manager is to divide up the work, divide up the known work into components and make people do it the one best way. What makes a business successful today is not any of those things. So the role of the manager is gone then. Well, yes. I would say that. Yes, the role of the manager is gone. The role, that role of a manager. The role of a person to help teams become effective is there still, but it's not what it used to be. It's a whole new set of things. Leaders today, that, that role today that used to be done by a manager, I don't have a name for it yet, but I want to come up with one. The, that role is unique because what you're trying to do is not make people be repetitive and the same every time, but you're trying to help people be creative and innovative and collaborative. So your job is completely different. The tools are completely different. The way you work is completely different. You're not breaking work up and making them do it the one best way. You're helping them be creative. You're helping them become engaged. You're helping them work together. And that's a new set of skills, a new set of tools that you need to learn. I have a class coming up that I'd love to have you in that is teaching those new skills so that you can become more effective, so that your teams can become more effective in this new industrial revolution. So I hope to see you there and we'll talk more about it soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.